I'm Joe Burns, down from Georgia. So I use BioBrace simply for the strength and the biology combination. We went through that, but that's the quick answer. The technique that, that we're gonna show is one that requires four portals, a 50 yard line view, then we prep the BioBrace beforehand with four sutures, and we'll show you how to do that. So you wanna do as much work as you can outside of the shoulder so that you have less to do when the graft gets inside the shoulder. So getting into from here, here's our four portal placement. We've got dry docks, standard anterior, standard posterior. I do all my shoulders lateral position. We've got the scope posterior lateral, so we're looking down that 50 yard line, and an anterior lateral cannula, which you can put a dry dock in for, through which the brace will go. Two sutures medial, two sutures lateral, and you're ready to go. This is a short tailed interference knot, and this is how we tie it. I want everybody to understand how to do this before we leave today. This is Dr. Joe Burns. We're gonna show you the technique for making a short-tailed interference knot or stick knot, which we use to manage grafting for rotator cuff repair augmentation. You take your suture here, and we're gonna do a four plus one technique, which is basically four throws. One, two, three, four. Set that there. And then if you want a little extra bulk to keep this from pulling through the tissue, you add one more knot on the side to there, and then we just cut the tip off and leave about six to 10, cent 10 millimeters on the end, and we've got our short-tailed interference knot. So that stick knot there will sit on top of the graft. I think we were clear about that. And then you cut a little bit off of it so the suture limb doesn't get in the surgeon's way and they're ready to go. So that's a stick knot. Now. Once we've got the graft prepared and the rotator cuff fixed, it's just a handful of minutes after that. We need to use spectrum. We're gonna open a 45 right and a 45 left, four sutures and the bio brace. And we're gonna pass a through and through stitch through the posterior medial aspect of the tissue. About a centimeter medial to the repair and um, about two centimeters apart or so. One centimeter and a half, two centimeters apart. We'll show you how to do that. We're gonna put one stitch in through the posterior cannula, pull the su stick suture out, and this is the second suture going in through the anterior cannula. We'll send a PDS or a super shuttle through. The grasper comes through our anterolateral cannula. We load up the stick suture and pull that down through and out. So now we've got two sutures coming from the graft, down the anterolateral cannula, out the anterior and out the posterior cannula. The graft is still outside the body, but at this point, we're ready to pull it in. That's it, just those two sutures. Now we fold the graft on itself, we hold it with a regular, any old grasper, and we introduce it into the cannula while your assistant is pulling the slack out with the anterior and posterior limbs of our sticks. You can see them, one here and one there. So I'll start it to get that friction in through the cannula and the assistant just pulls the slack out. I can let go of that grasper any time. And there you see how those sticks can hold the, hold the graft down and enable you to pull it into the shoulder without a lot of extra sutures there. So now the graft's in, and it's temporarily fixed medially. So the next step is gonna to be to grab each one of those sticks and tie it. Two ties, that's it. To control and pull the graft into the shoulder, once this graft is in the shoulder, we can grab the stick knots and tie them down as standard knots. Tying through the anterolateral portal, we can tie first the anterior, now the posterior stick knot down, and this will fix the graft securely to the underlying rotator cuff. You can see how that type of fixation is going to be much more trustworthy than the staples if we want this to load share, and we do. Then we're just basically going to put knotless anchors in laterally. We're gonna use our luggage tag sutures or our, or our mattress sutures laterally and um, load them up into a knotless anchor. This is a pop lock here that we can then tension to allow some load sharing on the graft. We don't know exactly how much, make it snug. And then a second poster lateral knotless tension. Lock it, cut it, and this is what it looks like when we're done. This is a spanning graft over the top of our primary repair. So tips and pearls, stick knots. Another name for it is a mulberry knot. If your surgeon says, hey, is that like a mulberry knot? Yes, it's the exact same thing. 
shuttling the biobrace in, initiate the biobrace into the cannula with the grasper. You don't just pull it in through the cannula initially because it'll get caught on the diaphragm with probably too much friction. So just get it started in the cannula. Suture placement, about one, those medial sutures, about one centimeter medial to the cuff repair edge and um, about two centimeters apart from anterior to posterior. Suture management we just talked about. ComEd products used, very similar, biobrace, four hi-fi sutures, two stick knots, spectrum right, spectrum left, three dry docks, suture shuttle, and pop locks or knotless anchor laterally.